Considered to be the member of the Holy Trinity in Hinduism, Shiva is most certainly a god with many layers and extreme personalities. He represents goodness, kindness, innocence, and at the same time maintains the darker side as a god of destruction. However, Shiva's destructive nature is not malicious, but is born out of necessity, because in order to create something new, the old must be first removed. Shiva is often shown meditating while seated on a tiger's skin. With a third eye on his forehead, he adorns himself with snakes around his neck and the moon on his head. From his locks of matted hair flows the holy river Ganga. He holds the trident in one hand and the drum in another, known to abstain from all forms of indulgence and desires through his thousands of years of penance and meditation. Shiva is undoubtedly the most fascinating and the most worshipped god of the Hindus. As the tales go, Brahma and Vishnu were once having an argument as to which one of the two was more powerful. At that point, a great blazing pillar, like a burning shivaling, shot out of nowhere. It extended from the ground, soaring up to the sky. It was said to be so tall that Brahma and Vishnu were unable to find the ends of the pillar. They could not comprehend what it was and how it had appeared. They decided to make use of the situation to find who was more powerful between the two. Brahma flew towards the sky while Vishnu went down towards the ground, trying to find the limits of the blazing pillar. But no matter how high Brahma flew or how low Vishnu went, the pillar seemed not to have any limits. Neither of them were able to find the ends of the pillar. Suddenly, the center of the pillar opened up and there appeared Shiva, the one who had grabbed their attention for so long. Brahma and Vishnu immediately recognized his power and acknowledged his power as the superior of the Trinity. Shiva is a god with multiple layers of personality. On one side, where he is called Bholenath, meaning the innocent one, he is also the bad-tempered and fierce Rudra who burned down karma or desire to ashes. He has a family with Parvati as his wife and Ganesh and Kartikeya as his sons, but he is also a Vairagi and Nirmohi, meaning oblivious to the worldly affairs and having no attachments. On one side, where he is the destructor of evil, he is also Bhutnath, meaning the master of all ghosts. Some interpret that Bhutnath means the master of Panch Mahabhut, literally meaning the five great elements of nature, which are the fire, water, air, ground, and sky. Irrespective of one's nature, intention, and status in society, be it a demigod, human, demon, or a ghost, Shiva is popular to grant desired boons to anyone who worships him without thinking about the consequences. One such incident was when a demon named Bhasmasura, after great penance, pleased Lord Shiva and was granted the power that anyone whose head he touched shall burn into ashes. Upon having the power, he tried to kill Lord Shiva himself but was later tricked into touching his own head. It is from these emotion-driven actions he has derived the name Holy Nath for himself, which means the innocent one. There is not one but many stories of Shiva that bring out his goodness. One such story where Shiva sacrifices his own safety to protect the demigods and the demons is quite popular. Samutramanthan, the churning of the ocean of milk, was organized to produce the Amrit or the nectar of immortality, which would re-establish the glory of the gods. Vasuki, the king of snakes, that adorns the neck of Lord Shiva, was used as a rope to churn the ocean. The demons held Vasuki by head while the gods held it by tail, and together they were able to churn the ocean that gave birth to many miraculous gifts. But with these gifts came the Halahal, a poison that could wipe out all of the creation. This terrified both the demons and the gods, and both seeked help from Shiva. Shiva, known for his compassion and self-sacrifice, willingly swallowed the poison with no benefit of his own, but solely to save the world. 
it is said that his consort Parvati came to his rescue and through her Mahavidya controls the poison in his throat, not letting it spread throughout his body. The poison was so potent that it changed the color of Shiva's throat to blue, thus the common depiction of Shiva having a blue skin. It is from this incident he derives the name Nilakant, meaning the one with the blue throat. Another story that described the limitless might and power of Shiva is when he brought the holy river Ganga to earth. Bhagirath, who was a predecessor of Lord Rama, one of the incarnations of Lord Vishnu, undertook a rigorous penance to rescue his ancestors from Patal Lok or the underworld after being cursed by sage Kapil. He was eventually granted Ganga from the heaven who would wash away all the sins of his ancestors and save them from defame of society. Shiva is married to Parvati, the goddess who assumed the destructive form of Kali and Durga on many occasions. Parvati is the reincarnation of Sati, the first wife of Shiva. Sati was born to Taksha, who did not approve Sati's marriage to Shiva. But Sati defied her father and married Shiva. Daksha was never happy with the union of his daughter to a god that was prayed by all, including the demons, ghosts and evil spirits. In order to despite Shiva, he held a special sacrificial ceremony also known as Ayakya and invited all gods except Shiva. Despite being warned by her husband not to go to a ceremony where they were not invited, Sati went to the ceremony alone. Her father insulted her in front of all his guests, among whom were the great Lord Brahma and Vishnu. Unable to bear the insults towards her husband and herself, Sati threw herself in the sacrificial fire. When Shiva came to know that his beloved was burnt to death, he invoked in his wrath Virabhadra and Bhadrakali, who decapitated Daksha and the Yajna was destroyed. Shiva himself, in a rage, travelled throughout the world carrying the body of his dead wife. Shiva started his famous dance of rage, also known as Tandav, which disintegrated Sati's dead body into 51 pieces, each of which fell in different places. These sites were later converted to temples and today are known as Shakti Beat. It was only when Lord Vishnu interfered and convinced Shiva to calm down that the near apocalypse stopped and Shiva was able to see the destruction he had brought. He forgave Daksha and replaced his head with a goat's head and gave back life to the king. Shiva is different to different people. To some, he is a loving father, whereas to others, he is the fierce Rudra. To some, he is the innocent Polenath whereas a Nirmohi was lost into his eternal meditation for others. But the modern-day spiritual masters title Shiva as the god of nothingness, nothingness from where it all started and to where it will all end. Today, modern science is proving to us that everything comes from nothing and goes back to nothing, the basis of existence and the fundamental quality of the cosmos is a vast nothingness. The galaxies are just a small happening. The rest is all vast empty space which is referred to as Shiva. That is the womb from which everything is born and that is the oblivion into which everything is sucked back. Everything comes from Shiva and goes back to Shiva. Shiva is not light, Shiva is darkness. A flame or the sun will eventually lose its ability to give out light. Light is not eternal. It is always a limited possibility because it happens and it ends. Darkness is a much bigger possibility than light. Nothing needs to burn. It is always present. It is eternal. Darkness is everywhere. Shiva is everywhere.